talk. Um, as everyone has said, this has been a really interesting uh, workshop. Um, and um, I was asked to talk a little bit about uh, tackling biases, especially in uh, surface soil and moisture data, uh, and talk a little bit about the work we're doing at LSE. Um, the list of authors is by no means exhaustive, but these are a few people I work with at LSE, um, and we're looking at uh, calibrating the Oki Bin and Surface model. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about soil moisture in Orchidea, the data we have and the biases that we have in them. And then I'm going to talk about a case study we did uh, calibrating dry downs in Orchidea. Um, and then just some closing remarks. Um, all of this work is funded by ESA under an ESA CTI fellowship. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about what I plan to do with them later. So... Um, we're looking at calibrating parameters in Nokia. So as we've seen over the last few days, um, when we do land surface modeling based simulation, we're mainly doing parameter estimation. So the idea is to improve representation of soil moisture by improving the parameters in Nokia. Um, and I thought it'd be useful to just talk quickly about how soil moisture is modeled in Nokia. So uh, a hydric budget is given to uh, three groups of vegetation, which are um, bare soil, grass and crops and forests. And then these are average to get the soil moisture. The thing I really wanted to point out is this uh, 11 layer discretization of the soil column. So the first two meters of the soil column are discretized in ever increasing um, distance of layers. So while we're near the top, all the layers are very close together, a few centimeters apart. And as we go down, we get uh, larger gaps between the different soil levels. This is really important because it means that with Okide we have a uh, we're in position to really match the type of data we have. Because one of the problems we do have with soil moisture data is that, especially when we're talking about surface soil moisture data, what is the surface? Are we looking at the first five centimeters of the soil column or are we looking at the first 10 centimeters of the soil column? So with Okide, we're, we're quite lucky because we can try and match what we think the right um, depth should be. Uh, in terms of data, we've got quite a lot of data um, that we can use. Um, there's the in situ data. This uh, figure on the left is data from the International Soil Moisture Network. Um, and as you can see, we have the same problem we usually have with in situ data is that most of the sites are located in the Northern Hemisphere and a big concentration on um, in the US. Um, but it is a very good source of data. Um, and I think the International Soil Motion Network is not completely exhaustive. I think there's other uh, in situ sites that aren't even included in it. And then on the right hand side, I've put a figure of the uh, different satellites that are out there that we can use as retrievals. Um, this is from the ESA CCI um, website, uh, and they can really show how we have quite a long span of soil moisture retrieved data and loads of different sensors we can use. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the ECCI um, products because that is what I'm working with principally. Um, so we have the number of different satellites um, and there's the passive satellites and the active satellites. And the ECCI product um, has three, um, provides three different products. One which combines all the active sensors or which combines all the, sorry, passive, all the active sensors. And then one which combines all of them together. And I've put different histograms on the side to show the different uh, volumetric soil moisture that we have. Um, and we can see already that uh, the passive and the active, we have two different types of units. So ready when they're doing the merge to make a combined product, they already have to get the active to be in volumetric soil moisture so that we are in the same space. And to do this, uh, ESA CCI uses an intermediate land surface model um, called GLDAS. And using CDF matching, it matches the, um, it takes the dynamic range of GLDAS to merge all the products together. And then when we look at the combined product, we actually see that the histogram for the combined product looks a lot more like GLDAS than it does to the other two. And this is something that we have to be cautious with when we use a combined product. Because of this merge using the GLDAS, the GLDAS has imposed its dynamic range so we can't really trust it um, unless, uh, when we're comparing, are we comparing to the GLDAS model or are we actually comparing to different sensors? So 
ESA CCI are trying to move away from this problem. And instead of using GLDAS as an intermediate model, they're looking at using SMAP and SMOS to do the merge, but they're not there yet. So can we use this data? Um, and if we want to, how do we do so? So the first thing we can do is do CDF matching to match it to our climatology. So there's a different sensors which have been merged into the GLDAS climatology. And then we merge those, we do CDF matching to map it onto the land surface model we're using. And this is done quite a lot, especially in the operational sense. Um, and there's quite a lot of complex ways for CDF matching. You can do it uh, for the whole time series, but then you can also break it down by different seasons. Um, and on the right-hand side, I've done the CDF matching for the uh, ECA CCI combined product onto Orchide, um, just for the whole time series. I haven't looked at fitting it in different seasons, but you can see that we can basically have the same um, histogram. The other thing we can do is to look at different metrics. So for example, the unbiased RMSE, um, and so instead of looking at the full RMSE, we try and remove the biases by not using them in the metric that we are trying to minimize. And the final thing we can do is look at temporal, temporal dynamics. And this is done quite often, especially when we look at uh, like uh, uh, LSE, when we assimilate LEI, we're actually doing NDVI more to get the kind of temporal dynamics. So it's less about getting the absolute values right, but it's more about getting the timings. Um, and we're going to look at how we could use that doing soil moisture in Orchide. So I'm going to do a quick case study showing um, temporal dynamics you uh, dry downs and we're just going to look at some in situ sites first. The in situ sites I've used have all been uh, international soil moisture network sites within the footprint of a Fluxnet tower. I wanted this because then you could have localized rain and obviously precipitation is very important in our surface models because it's the principal driver of soil moisture. So we want to get that as accurate as possible. And also having the flux net data means that we're in a unique position to be able to then validate, evaluate the models using other flux data. So I said, we're gonna look at dry downs. Um, what is a dry down? The dry down is the uh, temporal dynamic, the, the exponential decrease that happens in a period of no rain after a significant precipitation event. And when this happens, we can fit an exponential given by this equation, where A is the amplitude, theta EQ is the asymptote towards which the soil moisture tends towards, and tau. Tau is the uh, temporal e-folding metric that tells us the shape of this dry down. And so if we have a large value of tau, it means that this is very shallow, so we're, it's taking the soil a long time to dry out. And if we have a small value of tau, it means that this is steep. And so the soil, moisture, the soil is drying out faster. And because it's a temporal metric, it's less affected by CDF matching. So it's a way of extracting temporal information from the soil moisture data without having to deal with the biases and do any matching. And it's also an interesting metric in itself. It's a, it's a measure of soil moisture memory. So if we get that right in the model, then it has a lot of repercussions for the predictability of our, of our land surface model. So that was a kind of theoretical picture. What does it look like in practice? So this is over an African site. Um, the model is in red, the observations are in gray, and then each um, orange um, wedge is a, a period of no rain. So this is where our dry downs occur. And we can see that our tau values for the model are lower than the tau values for the uh, observations. And this is because the model is drying out a lot faster than it is in the observations. So this looks at all of the sites um, at the same time, all the different dry downs that we can detect. Um, and the size of the dot is the length of the dry down. And generally we find that the model dries out faster than the observations, but we can't, we tried to sample other, other properties of the dry downs, but it was too small a sample to really draw any conclusions about whether the dry downs were linked in our models more to vegetation, soil textures, climate. Um, and this is something that hopefully we can do when we have more data. So I said, we're gonna do parameter estimation. And uh, this is one of the other challenges um, I wanted to highlight when we do parameter estimation in land surface model modeling is the parameter selection. So what parameters do we use and what is the trade-off between 
having as much parameters as possible, but then also our efficiency. So here we decided to do a Morris sensitivity analysis over a number of parameters. But again, these parameters were already provided to us by the modelers. So there might even be some more parameters that we're not including. Um, but we took a selection of uh, soil hydrology parameters, phenology parameters, basic synthesis parameters, respiration parameters, and ones linked to the energy balance. And the Morris sensitivity analysis doesn't really tell you the interactions between the parameters, but it gives you a good idea of which ones are sensitive and it gives you some kind of ranking, which I then uh, normalize. So the ones which are a dark color means that they're sensitive and the ones which are white means there's no sensitivity. And so we see that for our dry downs, the soil hydrology parameters are sensitive, which we expect. Um, and then we also find in phenology, VC max is quite strong. Uh, SLA, which is specific leaf area, is quite uh, prominent as well. And so is this parameter RS. And so RS is the bare soil um, resistance to evapotranspiration. So they're all kind of parameters that make sense. And we could include more parameters, but we decided for this step to pick the ones which were in hydrology and then the other three prominent ones that we saw in the other set. So when we go to calibration, um, I apologize, it's a bit of a busy plot, but I'll try and <laughs> explain it. So I did two calibrations. The first one is called uh, tau opt, um, opt tau, and this is the one where I've calibrated just against the dry down events. So using the dry downs as observations and assimilating against these. And I'm comparing it to the full soil moisture um, optimization. And this one I've done just a simple um, CDF matching um, over the whole season, just to see how the two compare. Um, across the top is a fraction of tiles which have been included. So zero means none of them are included, uh, improved, sorry. And the one at one means that they, they have all improved. And then in the main plot is a total RS, RMSE for tower events, where the cross is the calibration set and the plus is the evaluation set. And overall, we see that by calibrating just against these tau observations, we do very well at improving the um, dry downs, both in terms of how many events we improve and then in terms of calibration and evaluation data sets. We do less well when we use the full Sormisher time series, and we can see some kind of quite big degradations in some places. What does this look like when we look at the full soil moisture time series? So this is the same plot, but this time I've been, we're looking at the soil moisture unbiased RMSE. There are a few sites for which we do worse when we use these parameters, optimize against the dry down events, but generally it doesn't change too much from the initial value. We also see that the uh, full soil moisture time series optimization does work better, but still not great. So if it, we're not getting as much improvement as we'd like. And this is maybe because we're also using uh, CDF matching over the full time series, and we would need to look at different CDF matchings to get a better, a better fit. We wanted to have a look at how it influenced the other fluxes. So here are three example sites, um, and we've looked at GPP, respiration, and latent heat. And we see that when we use the parameters which are optimized in the tau calibration, that uh, we don't really change too much our fit to the fluxes. And this is quite good because we can see that the fit to fluxes was already quite good. And the problem we have with cal calibrating land surface models is you cannot improve one data stream by degrading the other. So it's quite a good result that we can improve the dry downs without degrading too much the fit to the other fluxes. In contrast, when we use the parameters from the full soil moisture optimization, we do get a degradation. So this one is less these parameters are, we would need to include, include the fluxes in the optimization if we wanted to keep the fit to the fluxes to work. Uh, and finally, when we do these um, calibrations is to get a bit of an idea about these parameters. Um, these are all the different sites that we've calibrated against, um, against the different parameters along the bottom. And if the square is red, it means that it's increased in value. And if it's blue, it's decreased in value. And the darkness of the diamond says how much the parameter uncertainty um, has uh, changed. And I just wanted to highlight this RS parameter where 
which controls the best soil resistance to evapotranspiration. This is increased, so we're saying, because the soil, the model is drying out faster than the model, we need to make sure that the resistance is higher, so we're keeping more soil, more water in the soil. So this kind of highlights that this parameter is important, and in fact, this is a parameterization that we should look at more closely to improve dry downs. So I'm going to leave it there. I've got a few papers which um, talk, which summarise all of this work. Um, and as I've said, this work is all part of the um, ESA CCI research fellowship um, I'm doing with, um, with, with ESA. And the next step will be to also look at land surface temperature and, of course, to use satellite data for a global simulation. Thank you very much.